Good day to everyone. Здравствуйте, Кайрла Кун. Welcome to our webinar uh, focused on uh, current entry issues, um, last updates on immigration matters. So before we start our webinar, let us just check the sound connection and video connection. If you could just um, indicate zero if you have some uh, issues with uh, audio or video. So we could check if everything is working well. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything is okay. So let's start. My name is Aliya Andrbaeva and my colleague Razirat Narbai here with me today. We are speakers of the today's webinar and uh, we'll be happy to share our expertise and recommendations on current uh, entry rules. Uh, we'll update you on the latest uh, uh, changes to PCR requirement, PCR certificate requirements. Also, at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll have uh, 30 minutes for Q&A session where we'll discuss the um, questions that we received before the starting of the webinar where you sent your questions beforehand. And uh, so let's start. Hello, A brief everyone. information. Yeah, welcome to uh, our webinar. Thank you very much for taking your time out and being here with us today. Okay, so brief information about our company. Um, this year, we are celebrating 20 years anniversary of our company. Uh, we've been providing immigration and visa services since 2002. Currently, we cover more than 200 clients uh, around the world, not only in Kazakhstan, and uh, members of such uh, associations as uh, Eurobac and ILM. So let's just start the main presentation that we prepared for today's seminar. Just a second, we need to translate current uh, session to Facebook. If you could just give us two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and if you miss anything by the end of the webinar, you may not worry. And because the webinar will be is being recorded now and will be available for watching on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and our website as well. Uh, so just to give some uh, extra minutes for the rest of our attendees to join, maybe we will quickly go through the agenda that we will touch um, today. Uh, so the webinar will be started uh, with the basic entry procedure um, mm -hmm. covering visa-free regime, IDC permission, and applicable exemptions for these moments. Uh, and then we will go through recent changes in Kazakhstan immigration rules, like border crossing limits, entry conditions with PCR certificate, and vaccination passport holders as well. And, and then we will finish off with our Q&A session, where we have gathered the most frequently asked questions from the very different individual situations. And just as a gentle uh, reminder, on February 17 this year, we held a webinar in Russian, WPK group held a webinar on the same topic uh, with the participation of uh, Kazakhstan's state authorities and in particular from ministries of foreign and internal affairs um, with the participation of uh, National Security Committee and Healthcare Department. Uh, therefore, uh, we can say that you can be sure um, that the, all the information um, you can um, obtain with, from this webinar is uh, provided or at least confirmed by the competent Kazakhstan authorities. Uh, so for brief overview on general entry procedure, uh, main uh, required documents to enter Kazakhstan for foreigners uh, are visa, IDC permission, and PCS certificate, of course. Um, and is, as in many countries, 
um, we have uh, exemption lists. Uh, it depends, of course, on your citizenship and uh, you may be applied with uh, some um, exemption moments. As in many other countries, uh, with the onset of um, quarantine restrictions, Kazakhstan has temporarily suspended its agreements on um, visa-free travels between, between countries. However, over time, um, Kazakhstan started to uh, gradually um, resume its visa-free regime um, with, um, with countries. Uh, with, with which um, there are special bilateral agreements um, on visa-free travels exist. Uh, and permit, uh, the permitted period uh, for uh, citizens of these um, countries uh, depends on the conditions, of course, um, in each uh, concluded agreement. It depends on your citizenship, I mean. And, um, it, again, due to quarantine restrictions, Kazakhstan authorities have set a um, special resolution on the suspension of visa-free regime with the, um, another list of countries uh, with which uh, visa-free regime is in effect in a unilateral basis. Uh, Alia, is, if it is available, please switch to the slide. And the resolution uh, on the suspension of visa-free regime with the countries from this list was in effect uh, till from the beginning of quarantine restrictions, of mm -hmm. course, till the December 31, 2021. So starting from this, um, starting from January 1st, 2022, this resolution was terminated automatically and visa-free regime as well automatically has entered into force since the same date. And we mean there is no any new resolution which confirms the um, entrance into force of a visa-free regime. Um, in terms of conditions uh, for visa-free stays in Kazakhstan, uh, firstly, um, travel purpose of a foreigner should be uh, should cover only tourism, short-term business meetings, or private purposes. Um, Short-term uh, business meetings implies that business visa should cover only negotiating agreements, uh, contracting, or other similar business meetings. Uh, regarding business trips such as um, technical installation, maintenance, or audit services, then in that cases, we um, always highly recommend foreigner visitors to obtain special B2 business visa um, which are which is intended especially for mentioned purposes. And next conditions are um, intended for period of stay of a foreigner under the visa free regime. Um, here we can see that period of uh, period of stay of a foreigner should not exceed thirty calendar days at um, each his visit at each his entrance and in total in total the period of stay should not exceed um, 90 calendar days during each 180 day period uh, so in order to consolidate our information on last two conditions um, i uh, want to direct your attention to our example uh, all the accountings of my all my all my uh, accountings from this example will be done on an approximate date. Um, so, uh, let's imagine that foreigner entered Kazakhstan March first, uh, and uh, from this moment, from this date, uh, his one hundred and eighty days period also starts from the beginning of the first entrance date. Uh, he uh, visited Kazakhstan uh, with the monthly duration visits in March, in, um, a, in, uh, in March, in June, and in August, of course, with some intervals in uh, April, May, and July. Uh, and uh, visiting Kazakhstan for 30 days in March, uh, 30 days in um, June and August, he um, he used his uh, permitted 90 calendar day period under visa-free regime. And, uh, 
and uh, uh, by August 30, his 180 day period, also permitted period, um, uh, considered to be ended. And starting from September 1st till um, February 30, there starts another 180 day period, new period. Um, and um, as our experience shows, uh, there, are, there were some cases when a uh, foreigner, uh, for example, used his uh, nine, 90, um, 90 day period um, at once. For example, he has been traveled to Kazakhstan from March 1st till March 30, depart, um, departed, and then uh, again, re-entered Kazakhstan on April 1st, stayed here in, till April 30, and again re-entered. The last entrance was uh, on May 1st till May 30. And in this way, he used his 90 calendar days at once. But his 180-day period lasts from March 1st till August 30. And to end after he left Kazakhstan on May 30, he will be waiting for September 1st to re-enter Kazakhstan for the fourth time. Because um, the uh, start of the new 180-day period is an obligatory moment to re-enter Kazakhstan on under visa-free regime. Yes, and Jazira, one of the uh, popular questions that we receive from our uh, clients and foreigners about is there any limitations for re-entering Kazakhstan once he used already his first visa-free regime? Uh, will he be able to return back within the next day? So the question is, uh, the answer is yes, it is okay. The most important is to follow this uh, rule, uh, not exceed uh, total 90 days period within 180 days. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, a, and regarding to IDC permission, maybe some of you are already heard, some of you not. Let me introduce this document. Uh, IDC permission, one of the recent uh, news which was set uh, due to quarantine restrictions in Kazakhstan. And uh, this document is set by authorities uh, in order to control and uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the territory of Kazakhstan. Um, but uh, this document uh, uh, unfortunately cannot be obtained uh, by foreigner itself on his own because uh, in order to obtain this document, foreigner uh, always need an inviting party in Kazakhstan who will apply uh, for this document in order to invite foreigner um, to, uh, in, to Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, the, let's uh, turn to the conditions of IDC permission for whom it can be issued. Um, IDC permission um, always um, in general is issued for a single and multiple entries, um, but um, also, as our experience shows, um, IDC for if a um, foreigner, uh, if an inviting party in Kazakhstan didn't indicate any information on the multiplicity, on the number of entries of a foreigner into Kazakhstan, the IDC permission for a foreigner will be granted for a single entry only. Um, because there were some cases when um, uh, in the application form there were no any uh, information on the number of uh, entries and foreigner could use the IDC permission issued um, only for once. Uh, for such cases, if you need multiple entries in Kazakhstan, um, you, your inviting organization in Kazakhstan should uh, indicate its, in its application form that you uh, are requesting IDC permission for multiple entries. And only in this case, you will be granted IDC permission for multiple entries. And this was for the multiplicity, validity of IDC permission. Um, and if you are a foreigner 
who already issued uh, IDC permission in 2021, for example, and planning to visit Kazakhstan again in 2022. Um, you uh, may not um, issue IDC permission again for a new year, like, um, because uh, your previous, if your previous IDC permission was issued for multiple entries, it, is, it will be valid in 2022 as well. It is not necessary to reissue it again. Um, so uh, for, uh, in regards to the purposes of issuance of IDC permission, um, this is mainly this document is issued uh, again for work, business and private purposes only. Um, uh, if you remember at the very beginning of uh, quarantine regime, uh, in Kazakhstan, it was possible to enter Kazakhstan or obtain IDC permission uh, only uh, under work or business purposes. There were no any um, considerations for private purposes. But over time, um, with the, due to the improved COVID situations in Kazakhstan, uh, state authorities started to accept applications for travelers with private purposes as well. And uh, this is the very uh, good news we, we think. And uh, according to family members who are accompanying foreigners again, um, for example, um, uh, foreign inviting organization in Kazakhstan is apply, applying for IDC permission for foreign employee, for their foreign employee. And this foreigner has a family members who are who will accompany the, him in Kazakhstan. In this case, uh, inviting organization should indicate in the application form uh, in, in private um, information on each family member. They all of them should be included on the list of the applicants, and they will be like uh, also granted uh, IDC permission to enter Kazakhstan. And I think one of the important note uh, comment received from the state authorities on our last webinar is about updating of this IDC permission in case of change of your purpose of your visa and uh, in case of change of your inviting uh, party. So in case if it happens, then you will need to uh, receive um, new IDC permission with uh, a new uh, company details with your new purpose of a business trip, etc. So it was one of the important notes we received on our last webinar. Mm -hmm. Reasons for reissuance of IDC permission. Yes. Okay. So let's move forward. And of course, IDC permission also has its own exception list, which depends on again on the citizenship. Um, our exemption list uh, divided into three group of people. The first uh, group, uh, to the first group belongs citizens from uh, visa-free states uh, with which um, the regime is in effect in, in unilaterally and as well as bilaterally. Um, according, uh, and uh, in, uh, here we uh, need to point out that not only flights from directly from your country of citizenship, but transit flights are also allowed. Uh, this means that, uh, for example, a UK citizen uh, can enter Kazakhstan through transit flight uh, with Germany, for example. It doesn't matter if you are uh, arriving from your country of citizenship or not. If you are arriving uh, from the country from one of the countries from this list, uh, from this list, then you are allowed to enter Kazakhstan without IDC permission. Uh, and, and but in case, okay, mm -hmm. yes, continue. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, in case if a foreigner uh, is um, arriving not by a plane but uh, by land transport, if it is near abroad, for example. Uh, they decided to arrive across the border by car, for example, then in this, in such cases, IDC permission is mandatory despite of the citizenship. It's, the IDC permission should be issued, uh, obtained. 
Mm -hmm. And one of the important note uh, that we have to say due to the uh, these new amendments, uh, since it uh, just came into force uh, recently, just uh, before it depends on country again. If you travel from far abroad, uh, from, from far country, for example, Singapore, or I don't know, maybe um, uh, uh, USA or um, Chile, then just before the departure from your country, just make sure and uh, clarify with your um, air company, air flight company, that they will allow you to depart from your country because uh, in our practice, these uh, few last two weeks, we um, see that some countries, some remote countries still uh, haven't received any confirmation or information, updated information about this exemption list from our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Therefore, just uh, to be on a safe, uh, safe side, just make sure before your departure from this country without IDC permission that your air flight company will allow you to depart. If in case if they uh, still didn't receive this information, you need to provide them uh, the appropriate uh, document, which it is the updated um, current uh, rules for crossing the border of Kazakhstan, which is also published on the website of the state of Surti. Okay, mm -hmm. just an important note because some countries already received this information that IDC permission is not, received, uh, is not required for visa free regime country, but some far countries still uh, didn't receive updates from our country, from our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay, thank okay. you, Olia, for additional comments. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the second list of people covers uh, citizen from a visa-free regime, uh, from countries of visa-free regime, which are in, which is in effect on the basis of a bilateral agreements. Uh, and again, the the same conditions on transit, the same conditions of crossing water by land transport, also also applicable for the group of uh, people from uh, from these states, Azerbaijan, Argentina, Armenia, and so on. The third uh, group of um, foreigners uh, is intended for citizens um, from countries uh, with which uh, Kazakhstan has already um, resumed its direct regular air flights. Uh, this means that uh, if, even if you are not a visa waiver, but um, Kazakhstan resumed um, direct regular air flights with the country of your citizenship, then again, you are allowed to enter Kazakhstan without uh, obtaining IDC permission. Uh, due to current um, recent um, news in the in Kazakhstan immigration rules, uh, is about once in 15 days rule. Uh, if we remember um, this before this um, change, uh, this rule um, was in effect under once in 30 days rule, because of, uh, it means that uh, after departing in, from Kazakhstan um, for till the next re-entry into, into the country, uh, foreigners should wait for 15 days uh, left um, because uh, it, 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 this rule was um, designed in order to control the um, continuous um, exits and entries into Kazakhstan and again to prevent the spread of COVID-19 um, and the epidemiological situation in general in the country. And who uh, are affected by this rule? Uh, most uh, the main is the um, residence permit holders and their family members who are spouse, parents, and children. Uh, and this means that uh, while um, what if once they are depart left Kazakhstan and are planning to uh, re-enter the territory of Kazakhstan again, uh, they firstly should wait for 15 days left. Um, and uh, by showing the a copy of the um, 
passport of a residence permit holder and their own, if it's family member, their own copy of passport and re-enter Kazakhstan um, after um, 50 days um, left since, the, since their last departure date. And the next group of people who are affected by this rule uh, is the foreigners who are family members or relatives of Kazakhstan citizens. Uh, and again, uh, while arriving or um, um, re-entering Kazakhstan again after 15 days from the departure date, they again shows the document uh, which will prove the family relationship between Kazakhstan citizen and the foreigner and their copy of passport. Uh, and regarding the countdown of the 15-day period, uh, this um, counting starts from the uh, till the next entry permission. This counting will start from the date of last departure of a foreigner from Kazakhstan. If, for example, if you uh, left Kazakhstan on March 1st, uh, and you are a residence permit holder or family member, uh, you can enter Kazakhstan again after uh, 15 days uh, passed from your date of departure. And you can re-enter on March 16. Uh, the exemption on this rule, uh, again, depends on your citizenship uh, and will not apply to you. If you are a citizen of countries um, of uh, visa-free states or a citizen of country with which Kazakhstan nowadays resumed its direct regular air flights. And uh, this exception uh, will be applied to you only if you are traveling again by air. Um, and uh, in case um, if, uh, it, if it is very um, urgent for you to enter Kazakhstan without waiting uh, 15 days, um, you may uh, apply, your inviting um, party in Kazakhstan may apply for IDC permission with the indication of the uh, purpose of your urgent re-entry. And uh, with, by showing um, this IDC permission uh, issued, you can re-enter Kazakhstan earlier than 15 days from the date of your departure. Yes, and uh, also it should be noted that uh, obtaining of this IDP, IDC permission process takes approximately two, three weeks. Therefore, it is also advisable to obtain such IDC permission beforehand, before your departure from Kazakhstan, in order to make sure that by your departure, you will already have in your hands um, entry permission earlier than 15 days. Because in case if you start the process of IDC permission uh, during your vacation out of Kazakhstan, then you will need to uh, wait uh, until the decision is received from the interdepartmental committee. Therefore, it is uh, very advisable to start the process as soon as possible, as soon as you decide uh, to depart from Kazakhstan for vacation or for business trip, for example. Yeah, of course, planning in all immigrational moments are very important mm -hmm. in advance, before planning in advance, yeah, before even departing from Kazakhstan. And to consolidate the information from um, the last uh, rule, let's uh, consider some examples. Uh, for example, this foreigner from uh, USA with um, just as a note, uh, who, which is a visa waiver state. Um, he is a residence permit holder and is planning to re-enter Kazakhstan by a plane. And what are the requirements for him to re-enter Kazakhstan? Firstly, he is allowed to cross the border without waiting for 15 days because he is a um, USA, uh, because he is a um, citizen of a visa waiver country, therefore um, he can cross the border earlier than 15 days. IDC permission is not needed. Um, again, why? Because he's a, a visa waiver and he's traveling by air. 
and the mandatory or the only mandatory document is to have a PCR certificate with you upon arrival. The another case is for Indian citizen uh, with which Kazakhstan re resumed its direct air flights. Uh, he is a spouse of Kazakhstan citizen and uh, wants to re-enter Kazakhstan by car, by land transport. Uh, and here are some entry requirements for him. Firstly, he should obtain a visa because uh, uh, Kazakhstan has no any agreement on visa free travels uh, with the India. Uh, then IDC permission is also needed because he is re-entering, crossing the Kazakhstan border by land transport. Therefore, the IDC permission is mandatory. And the third mandatory document is, uh, of course, PCR certificate. Um, if it comes to PCR and vaccination passports, um, if uh, we remember, uh, we, uh, on the onset of um, um, Omicron spread in Kazakhstan, uh, state authorities um, uh, temporarily suspended again uh, the exemptions on vaccination passport holders, PCR certificates, and so on. Until uh, the February 18, all foreigners, all foreigners arriving in Kazakhstan, um, was uh, obligatory to show PCR certificate with a negative test result, even if they are from countries. Uh, whose um, uh, vaccination passports are recognized by Kazakhstan. And starting from uh, uh, February 18, uh, according to the resolution of uh, Chief Sanitary Doctor of, of the Kazakhstan, uh, this um, suspension was um, terminated. And again, we started uh, to use the exemptions uh, for vaccination passport holders. And let's go through on general um, rules regarding PCR certificate. Uh, first, all individuals arriving in Kazakhstan must have a PCR certificate with a negative test result. Uh, then certificate um, must be, of course, valid for less than 72 hours since the issuance time upon your um, departure moment in Kazakhstan, upon you are crossing the border of Kazakhstan. Arrival, arrival moment. Arrival in Kazakhstan. Uh, there were some cases when um, foreigners arriving from far abroad uh, and um, took uh, their um, PCR tests um, at the very first uh, departure country, for example, from America, for example, foreigner is arriving from America and he was tested uh, for PCR in America. And until the moment when he arrived in Kazakhstan, this certificate lost its validity and um, uh, he was um, deported from Kazakhstan because he was no, he, he have no any valid certi PCR certificate. And in such cases, we recommend um, foreigners to, uh, to to update their certificates while they are mm, flying through transit countries because um, it is um, applicable, it is allowed to re-enter, to, to enter Kazakhstan with an updated PCS certificate because um, due to the long distance between, mm, between America and Kazakhstan. Therefore, you can update your PCR certificate and uh, freely uh, enter Kazakhstan with uh, your new second PCR certificate. Uh, the last uh, rule is that um, a change is that foreigners are uh, now no longer required to self-isolate upon arrival in Kazakhstan. Uh, this rule before um, was in effect, especially for um, citizens from um, African countries, and they were obliged to get self-isolated upon their arrival. Uh, and we are now happy to inform that even uh, foreigners from African countries are no lo longer required to self-isolate upon their arrival. And let's turn to the um, exemptions of this uh, certificate um, rule. Uh, if he, um, the, the certificate is not required for children 
under five year old. And if you are uh, received your full course of vaccination in Kazakhstan and you are a holder of Kazakhstan vaccination passport, then you um, again do not require any PCR certificates. Um, and if you are a holder of a foreign vaccination passport, which is recognized by Kazakhstan, uh, you also um, are not required to show your PCR certificate upon arrival. So here is the list of uh, countries um, which Kazakhstan has recognized the vaccination passports. Um, like um, Argentina, India, Japan, and so on. And Alia, if you have any additional comments here regarding these vaccination passports. I can just add that this list is subject to change uh, regularly basis on the uh, decision of the interdepartmental committee again. So just before your trip to Kazakhstan, you need to check whether your country um, signed agreement with Kazakhstan on acceptance of such vaccination passports on mutual basis. Yeah, and of course, please um, make note that uh, all the sub, um, all the changes, suspensions, uh, everything is up to the uh, epidemiological situation in each country. It's all observed by Kazakhstan state authorities, and uh, due to that, they can. Uh, make some changes in current entry procedures. We also, I think, have to um, highlight here about the uh, uh, citizens of um, another countries who received such vaccination passport in these countries. This passport vaccination, uh, vaccination passport will also be acceptable because when we sign the agreement on acceptance of vaccination passport, our government um, confirms on validity of the vaccination passport itself, not uh, regardless of this uh, citizenship of the foreigner. Uh, so for example, a USA citizen may get uh, the passport vaccination, for example, in Japan. Uh, and if he received this passport vaccination in the Japan and he uh, can show this passport vaccination uh, during his arrival in Kazakhstan on border crossing the border procedure, it will be okay and still it still works because our garden, again, uh, let me just confirm, um, accepts the vaccination passport itself from the country with which Kazakhstan signed the agreement on acceptance, not from the country of citizenship. Of the foreigner. Okay. Uh, during our previous webinar and uh, during um, getting questions in beforehand for, for this webinar, we are, uh, we get a lot of questions regarding booster vaccination and the validity of these foreign vaccinations. Um, there we can say that uh, booster vaccination, the third phase vaccination, is not obligatory. Uh, from the Kazakhstan side uh, in order to enter Kazakhstan. Uh, this means that uh, you can uh, use your vaccination passport where only two phases of vaccination is indicated and um, Kazakhstan um, state authorities, border uh, control, border service will not um, control the um, validity or the uh, state of phase of vaccination you can use your vaccination passports in any way. Mm. I think this question mostly raised because of some uh, 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 recent change with regards to um, our Kazakh vaccination passport, which, um, yes, which uh, will expire. Yes, if you didn't receive a third uh, dose, third uh, I mean booster after getting, for example, a foreigner, got the vaccination in Kazakhstan uh, last year and got two doses of um, local vaccine. In this case, if six months already passed from this time, then it will be required to provide PCR certificate or get third dose of this vaccination in Kazakhstan. With regards to foreigners, there is no such requirement, mandatory requirement on updating of your vaccination passports at the moment. 
issue. This is only regarding Kazakhstan vaccination passport holders. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as for um, extra important information, we would like to uh, share with you um, very like uh, experienced case uh, in order to protect you, to prevent you from online scams and money loss. Uh, because uh, recently a foreigner uh, called us to, in order to, um, uh, to get information and to um, book our online consultation on current entry procedures. Uh, he said that he already issued, uh, he already obtained a visa to Kazakhstan and we asked him to send us the visa uh, issued um, in order to review what are the conditions for him according to his visa. And he sent us uh, this uh, copy of electronic visa. Um, by, by reviewing it, we understood that this, uh, this visa was a fake, um, taking into account the next, uh, the following uh, rules of Kazakhstan. At this moment, service of, uh, of obtaining Kazakhstan electronic visa is suspended due to quarantine restrictions and uh, you cannot uh, obtain any electronic visa um, to Kazakhstan. It's not issued nowadays. Uh, and electronic visas, if it is even permitted to issue, to obtain, uh, you can uh, uh, obtain a visa uh, only for single entry, not for multiple, but for only single entry and only under following purposes that are business, tourist and medical treatment. And even if you are applying for electronic visa, you again need an invitation form from your Kazakhstan party, who, which is the mandatory moment in order to obtain electronic visa. Um, so let's now um, turn um, to our Q&A session uh, with where we have gathered all like um, individual cases and interesting questions. Maybe you can get here something um, useful for you as well. And as we said all, um, earlier, all questions uh, here we uh, took from the registration list so foreigners could ask the questions send them to us uh, during the registration to this webinar so let's start from them because i see that we have lots of questions on our chat box i'm not sure if we have a time but we will try to uh, answer the questions very quickly okay. and very clearly we will try so let's start from questions uh, from our participants find yeah maybe we will you will find your answer during this session okay so let's start first question is about uh, taking into consider thank you taking into account the resumption of visa provision between kazakhstan and serbia do serbian citizens still require an idc permission to enter kazakhstan as we already uh, uh, stated uh, there is exemption list for visa free regime countries where Serbia also is listed here. So um, we confirm that uh, citizens of Serbia will not require to get IDC permission for entering Kazakhstan, again, by air, not by land transport, but by air. Mm -hmm. Next question, Rezira. Uh -huh. Before the quarantine restrictions started, Jordan citizens used to go to the Kazakhstan embassy in order to obtain single entry visa without having invitation letter from Kazakhstan. According to up-to-date rules, is it possible to obtain single entry visa without um, showing having invitation letter? Uh, uh, according to uh, the Kazakhstan uh, immigration rules, um, citizens from, uh, this, from this list of 48 economically developed and politically stable states can apply for single entry uh, visas, um, but only uh, for the issuance of uh, under categories of A3, A3, B1, B3, B10, and B12 category, uh, categories of visa. Uh, so um, Jordan um, citizens 
we do confirm that Jordan citizens can apply for a single entry visa, um, if, but it will again depends on the category of visa you are willing to obtain. Okay, third question. Kazakhstan resident permit holder has not traveled to Kazakhstan for 12 months due to COVID situation in country. Is it possible to enter Kazakhstan now after 20 months since the departure time? Is residence permit still considered to be valid? Unfortunately, no. Uh, according to migration uh, rule of Kazakhstan, if foreigner stays in Kazakhstan less than six months, in this case, uh, his residence permit will be uh, canceled automatically on the system of uh, migration police and uh, border control. And in case if you decide to arrive under this resident permit, knowing that you it may be canceled, you may be deported. So there, are, there will be a deportation from Kazakhstan because uh, on the system of border control or migration police, your residence permit will not be valid anymore. Unfortunately, yes, you will need to get new residence permit once you arrive in Kazakhstan but you need to arrive not under residence permit, uh, but maybe under visa-free regime, if you are from these countries, or with a B8 visa, which is, um, uh, how would say, transition visa to get this residence permit in Kazakhstan. Okay, next question. Uh, I am a citizen of one of the 54 visa-free countries. Currently, I'm working in Kazakhstan under multiple entry work visa. Do I still need to obtain an IDC permission for my future entries into Kazakhstan? Uh, as you are a citizen of uh, visa waiver states, uh, you are exempted from IDC permission obtainment, and we do confirm that you don't need uh, um, to show an IDC permission while upon your arrival in Kazakhstan. Next question. Can a foreigner from Philippines enter Kazakhstan having only PCR certificate, but without vaccination passport? What is the probable time of allowance to enter Kazakhstan by land transport without obtaining uh, IDC permission? So first question is, can foreigner from Philippines enter Kazakhstan? Um, uh, we have to check if uh, Philippines in the list of uh, countries with uh, uh, updated, with the accepted uh, vaccination. Let us just check, quick check. Yes, uh, Kazakhstan recognized. For example, in case if you have, yes, if you didn't receive uh, vaccination uh, in Philippines, you will need a PCR certificate, and it will be okay if you arrive in Kazakhstan with the only PCR certificate. If you receive vaccination uh, passport in your country, in, in the Philippines, you'll be allowed to enter Kazakhstan even with your vaccination passport. What is the probable time of allowance to enter Kazakhstan by land transport? What is the probable time to allow? So for land transport, the same uh, requirement, uh, plus, of course, IDC uh, per permit will be required for entering Kazakhstan um, on land, on car or train. Therefore, make sure that uh, on your hands, you will have your IDC permission. And of course, the probable time cannot be informed by us because uh, everything depends on the decision of state authorities who are observing the quarantine um, uh, situations in all over the world. And this is not in our hands, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It also depends, of course, on your visa type or if you have your work visa, which is valid for one, one year, of course, you will be able to stay in Kazakhstan under your multiple C3 work visa. Uh, and uh, you can stay here until the end of this visa. Okay. Um, is it possible to apply for B10 or B8 visa while foreigner is in Kazakhstan? For example, can he enter Kazakhstan under visa-free regime and apply for B10 visa within 30 days without leaving Kazakhstan? If it is not permitted, can he apply for those visa categories being in neighboring country like Kyrgyzstan? For example, he left Kazakhstan upon completion of 30-day period, then apply for the B10 or B8 visa at the Kazakhstan consulate in Kyrgyzstan. 
Okay, um, as for the B10 or B B8 visas, uh, let me remind that B10 category of visa is intended for private uh, purpose travels and B8 uh, for foreigners who are willing to obtain a residence permit in Kazakhstan. And B10 visa is, uh, cannot be obtained uh, at the territory of Kazakhstan. Um, uh, in, and B8 visa uh, can be obtained um, by um, staying in Kazakhstan. Um, uh, you can apply for B8 visa within 30 days without leaving Kazakhstan, but you cannot apply for B10 uh, in the same way. Um, and uh, regarding um, applications in, Kazakh in Kyrgyzstan, you can address uh, Kazakhstan um, consulates in Kyrgyzstan for both of the categories of visa for B10 for B8, but uh, make sure uh, that um, uh, Kazakhstan consulate um, may require you to show your uh, document, which will confirm the um, confirm your long period stay in Kyrgyzstan. Therefore, be, uh, get informed on these conditions as well. So, for example, if you are USA citizen, and uh, in this case, in case if in Kyrgyzstan there is a visa regime for you, uh, you can you can uh, confirm your legal stay showing the work permit or work visa or again resident permit in Kyrgyzstan. In this case, you you will be able to prove that you stay in Kyrgyzstan on the legal basis. All these requirements are um, for uh, is needed during your application at the Kazakhstan consulate for visas, mm -hmm. the Kazakhstan visas. Okay, next question. If expat arrives in Kazakhstan under visa free regime, is it possible to get multi entry work visa without leaving Kazakhstan? Uh, yes, it is possible. It is stated in current. Uh, visa issue rules that visa-free regime countries is able to turn from visa-free regime to working uh, visa category uh, staying by staying in Kazakhstan. In this case, inviting organization, I mean the employer, your employer, which obtained a work permit for you, has to apply for work visa and the local migration police. In this case, yes, you will be able to get this work visa, but uh, you have to know that you will have very, limit, uh, very uh, limited time. For example, if this is a 30 day period for visa free regime, uh, you need to uh, take with you, uh, bring with you all the documents that is required for work permit process from abroad, apostille it or legalized and provide it uh, to your employee immediately because the work permit process also takes a long time. It may take from uh, two uh, to four weeks to process the work permit. Or of course, employer can start the process of getting this work permit beforehand, before your arrival. In this case, of course, uh, you will just need to arrive in Kazakhstan. And if the work permit already will be um, in place, your employer just go to migration police to submit uh, the prepared documents. Yeah, of course, everything is to prevent the loss of time. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am an uh, Italian citizen and holder of Kazakhstan residence permit. On March 19, 2022, I'm going to fly to Italy. I'd like to know on conditions for my re-entry. Do I need to obtain an IDC permission in case if I'm planning to re-enter Kazakhstan earlier than 15 days since my departure date? Please confirm if an IDC permission is not needed for my re-entry as Kazakhstan has already resumed its direct regular air flight with Italy. We do confirm that uh, you will not need uh, uh, to obtain IDC permission and you may not wait for 15 days uh, past because you are a citizen of a visa or waiver country as well as the citizen of country with which Kazakhstan resumed its direct regular air flights. Therefore, once you departed from Kazakhstan, you may re-enter freely again. By air, yeah. Just by air. Very yes. important note that it, is, it must be by air. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, next question. What are the conditions to enter Kazakhstan without PCR certificate? 
but only with vaccination passport is a third vaccination booster vaccination indispensable or two phases vaccination is enough. Uh, what are the conditions? As we earlier uh, stated, there is a list of uh, countries, uh, vaccinations, passport of which Kazakhstan accepted, our government accepted uh, approximately uh, 30 um, countries vaccination yeah. passport. If your country uh, listed in, the, in this category and you received your vaccination from your country, in this case, of course, you will not be um, required to provide PCR certificate upon arrival in Kazakhstan. So just uh, make sure that your uh, country is listed in this um, uh, list of countries, which uh, was approved by our country as acceptable uh, vaccination passport. And the second question is the third vaccination booster. As my colleague Jazira already informed, uh, there is no um, mandatory requirement from our government to have the booster or third vaccination. In case if you just have this vaccination passport without the booster, it still will be okay for Kazakhstan to accept your vaccination passport. It, this information is also confirmed by healthcare department of Kazakhstan that um, no additional requirement for getting booster or third vaccination for foreigners. The only requirement is for foreigners we, who received uh, this vaccination passport in Kazakhstan. In this case, the foreigners must uh, make sure that six months didn't pass since the uh, second dose, which was received last year. So the only requirement applies to local vaccination passports. Yeah, but if you have your third vaccination, if it's, this is all also okay, and this yeah. will be better for your health, <laughs> you can have third vaccination if you would like so. My vaccination passport is recognized by World Health Healthcare Organization and I have three phases vaccination. Is my vaccination passport enough to enter Kazakhstan or should I have a PCR certificate and get self-isolated upon arrival? Um, we can confirm that um, you will be allowed to enter Kazakhstan if you are a citizen of country of which vaccination passport is recognized by Kazakhstan site. We have already uh, demonstrated the list of countries. Uh, please uh, look through this uh, list of countries and you can, if you are, if you could find your country of citizenship, then you can freely enter Kazakhstan only by showing vaccination passport. And in this case, your vaccination passport will be enough to enter Kazakhstan. Um, it, in regards to self-isolation, uh, nowadays, uh, no one is um, required and needed to self-isolate in Kazakhstan upon their arrival. Yeah, this requirement already lifted, uh, so no requirement of self-isolation for anyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, next question. My current Kazakhstan work visa will expire on June 24th, 2002. My passport will also expire by that time. So I'm going to get a new passport in China Embassy. Once I obtain my new passport, can I get my uh, Kazakhstan work visa renewed in Almaty? Uh, yes, uh, we can confirm that it is possible to transfer your current Kazakhstan visa from your old passport to new passport as soon as you receive it from China embassy. It is normal procedure. It can be done at the migration police. And since we are talking about work visa, this procedure must be uh, completed by your employer and um, the supporting documents as uh, your work permit, um, additional documents as visa application form, portals, et cetera, needs to be submitted again. The other variant is to uh, always uh, keep two, passport, two passports upon your departure and arrival to Kazakhstan. It is also acceptable and uh, the border control service of Kazakhstan um, accepts such cases when the foreigner have two passports, one with expired um, uh, passport, but with still valid visa, for example, or uh, and, and second passport, of course, the new passport. 
So two variants, but of course it all depends on when your visa expires. If it ex already expired on your old passport, then it needs to be uh, renewed with new dates. Yeah, just as a gentle reminder, extra information, um, pay attention to a, a vi uh, upon your visa renewal to the limits of time for permitted um, for the renewal, because uh, all visas should be renewed um, until um, five business days left uh, to the expiry date of your current visa. What happens if an expat has completed the required vaccination against COVID-19, including the booster, but the vaccination passport was obtained more than six months ago? And since the second booster is, has not been required yet, how will this affect his or her entry to Kazakhstan? And this um, question, we I hope that um, um, in regards to previous information that uh, the um, rules regarding a six month validity uh, will not uh, apply for foreign vaccination passports, only for Kazakhstan vaccination passport holders. And even if uh, foreigners foreign vaccination passport um, has um, validity more than six months, he can easily use his current vaccination passport till um yeah till uh, one year approximately one year yes one year. by standard it is advisable yes of course then, the second mm -hmm. booster yeah we confirm that second booster is not required next question does a resident permit holder but an indian citizen need to pass pcr test before the entrance into kazakhstan okay so we just need to have a look to the list of um the countries with which kazakhstan has agreement on recognition of the vaccination passport and we see that india is listed in this uh, table so let us confirm that uh, you just need to show your vaccination passport and in case if you don't receive vaccination passport in india then of course you will need a pcr test in uh, in order to arrive in kazakhstan and this yes. is despite of the fact that you are a residence permit holder. Even if you are not a residence permit holder, but an mm -hmm. Indian citizen, you, even in this case, you would uh, be enough to mm -hmm. show your vaccination passport. Okay. Um, what is the registration procedure for American citizens entering Kazakhstan? Um, by registration procedure, what is the... I means. think uh -huh, we, this means about the uh, notification of arrival uh, when foreigners uh, enters Kazakhstan. So before we talked about everything was about entering Kazakhstan, how to enter. Now the question is about um, post-entry, yeah, after entrance in Kazakhstan. Well, please make sure that, uh, please uh, be informed that uh, notification of arrival has no any exemption list of persons. This is obligatory for absolutely all foreigners um, who are arriving in Kazakhstan and, uh, to, and to notify migration service on the arrival is obligatory for American citizens as well. And such notification letters always submitted by inviting party so in case if you are working in Kazakhstan, so it means that your employer has to uh, submit this notification letter. If you are staying on the private visa in Kazakhstan, you're inviting a person in Kazakhstan, maybe it is your relative or uh, just friend who is a local person, has to submit a notification letter about your arrival within three working days. So yeah, it's the very most important moment within three business days okay for all purposes not only for work and for, uh, for private time. even even for tourism yes in case of tourism of course since you are staying um, at the hotel or maybe hostel uh, the hotel administration has to submit notification letter and as far as i know currently uh, 
maybe 99% uh, of all the hotels is aware about the procedure of submitting this notification letter. It is done electronically. So uh, just uh, you can just make sure that notification letter is submitted uh, for your name. And in case of uh, violation of this requirement, the inviting a party uh, will be responsible and take responsibility on the uh, code of uh, yes code of fines. Okay, next question. I think we are running out of time, but okay, just let's finish all these questions. We have simply twenty questions, and we will finish. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I apply for a residence permit while staying in Kazakhstan under the 30-day visa-free regime? What are the ways to prove financial solvency for a residence permit? Is it a certain dollar, dollar amount, existence of rent or property to purchases? And yeah, I think uh, you have a very detailed information on this question. Yes, uh, it is possible uh, to apply for residence permit under visa-free regime for this. Uh, firstly, you need to apply uh, for B8 visa once you arrive in Kazakhstan under visa regime and only afterwards you'll be able to submit the documents for residence permit. What are the ways to prove financial solvency? At the moment, the only way to prove your financial solvency is to put money into the uh, bank uh, of Kazakhstan, it must be a uh, Kazakhstan bank, and proof by certificate or statement of your proof of funds. Is it a certain dollar amount? Um, let me say it in tenge because I cannot uh, tell you it in dollar because it's changing every day. It's, um, approximately not four stable. yes currently it's not stable so let me just state it in uh, tenge uh, it is connected with of course the level of mci which is monthly calculation in, in the index of kazakhstan and in uh, tenge it will be approximately four million uh, fifty thousand tenge so this is the uh, minimum that you have to yeah that you have to have in your uh, kazakh bank account or is the existence or rent or property purchase? No, unfortunately, there are no other variants. The only way to show your uh, financial stability is to prove your bank account showing the uh, enough money, which is four million, four million, fifteen thousand thingy. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to ask about current facilitations for Ch Chinese citizens to apply for Kazakhstan tourist visa. Um, we are uh, have already told and we are glad to, to repeat again that Chinese uh, citizens are now considered to be visa free waivers. And therefore, you can be sure that um, you can travel to Kazakhstan under a visa free regime, even for uh, no, for Chinese for, citizens, uh, hi, Jezira. Uh, at the moment, yes, we uh, don't have this uh, visa-free uh, agreement with China. For this case, the only option would be to apply for um, tourism invitation letters through tourism agencies in Kazakhstan. Ah, so for the, yes, okay. for tourist purpose. Uh, you need to find any tourism company in Kazakhstan and ask to grant invitation letter for tourism purpose by providing the uh, passport details of your uh, of citizens of China, of course. And only afterwards, after getting this invitation letter approved by our local authorities, uh, Chinese citizens uh, abroad in China, for example, through Kazakh embassy, will be able to get um, tourist visa on the passport on the basis of this invitation letter. But first of all, of course, this invitation letter must be approved by our country through migration police. Yeah. Okay, next question. What are the possible ways for US citizen to stay longer than 30 days? Um, okay, so in order to uh, extend your stay, your stay in Kazakhstan, uh, there you are, of can, course, several options here, yeah, Jazira. Yeah, you can stay uh, for, of course, you can stay uh, longer than 30 days by obtaining um, B3 uh, visa 
for uh, with a with a with a period of um, one month duration, and or by obtaining a brand new C three work visa. There are two options of uh, staying which are in very popular. Yes, one of them is B3 visa, which is issued for another 30 days. Second is to get, of course, C3 working visa. This is the for longer period, much more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I am from Vietnam and currently working at Nazarbayev University. I would like to bring my father here for tourism. The period is less than one month. What should I prepare? Uh, and if we look through again or... Uh, the list of uh, visa waiver states of 54 countries. Here we can see the um, Vietnam, we can find here. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Citizens of Canada stayed in Kazakhstan for about 30 days. After that, he wants to visit Uzbekistan for a week and come back to Kazakhstan. Is it possible for him to enter Kazakhstan again? Does he have to wait uh, 15 days before entering Kazakhstan for second time? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's just uh, state here that if we talk about uh, the category of um, <clears throat> foreigners, which are resident permit holders and the family members and the foreigners who are family members of local people, in this case, only 15, one to 15 days rule will apply. So I hope that, I think that uh, citizens of Canada yeah, falls under this uh, category and he's asking a question about this. So in this case, of course, for um, uh, re-enter Kazakhstan, um, Canada citizen, if he use a transport, since Canada is listed in the countries uh, with visa free regime, he will not be able to, um, wait for 15 days in order to re-enter Kazakhstan because, uh, again, he enters uh, via a transport and the Canada is listed in the countries with visa-free regime. In case if he is traveling by land transport, in this case, of course, the um, IDC permission will be required uh, to for ur urgent uh, returning to Kazakhstan or wait for 15 days. This is only for uh, land transport. So the last question. I have I... a citizenship of Turkey and will fly to Kazakhstan on March 2. I have a COVID-19 vaccination passport and the third uh, BioNTech vaccination was done a month ago. According to the latest data, I do not need to take a PCR test. Is this true? And will there be any problems at the airport upon departure, I think? Mm -hmm. um, look through again mm -hmm. uh, to the list of uh, countries with the recognition of vaccination passports. And here we can find Turkey among countries. Um, thus, we can confirm that uh, your vaccination passport is um, uh, will be accepted by our border service staff and you uh, will be uh, allowed to enter Kazakhstan by showing your vaccination passport and without having PCR certificate. So it was our last question that we received from our participants. Uh, we see that we have lots of questions on chat book. Unfortunately, we are out of time and we have to finish our session today. Uh, in case if you still have questions uh, on our website, it is possible to order online consultation at wpk.kz, where you can choose the time that is acceptable for you and our consultants will contact you and uh, will answer all your questions related to immigration sphere. So um, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for participation. We were glad and uh, hope that you received a lot of <clears throat> useful information from us. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you for uh -huh. your time again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And in case of any question, just contact us. We'll be happy to answer all your questions. By uh, online consultation. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.